Hello everybody and welcome back to Winner in a Week. This is the third video in a series on poker math entitled Essentials Made Easy. My name is Dylan and in this video I'll be covering position, pot odds, break even equity, and equity swings primarily in the game of Texas Hold'em but we'll also take a brief look at outs and the corresponding equity in Omaha. Here's the outline for the video itself. Yeah, we'll do position very quickly here with the Hold'em manager replayer, both for full ring and six max. Take a quick look at pot odds and equity, and then get, go into detail with these concepts in the calculators and the equity spreadsheets that I've uh, compiled and or created myself and programmed myself based on what I feel is uh, optimal for online play. Then we'll look at the outs and the corresponding equity calculation for Hold'em in Omaha. Uh, take a quick look at implied odds, reversed implied odds, uh, discounting outs, and runner runner analyses uh, in Texas Hold'em, not in Omaha. Uh, we'll take a brief look then at hitting playable flops again, uh, and take a couple of looks at example hands from the Hold'em replayer, uh, just concerning equity swings and um, yeah, just give you an idea of how that actually plays out uh, when you are playing for real money online. Here is a full ring 10 player game. This is again the Hold'em Manager replay. And position as such in Hold'em in Omaha uh, is described in different ways. You always have the button, this D here, this dealer button. Uh, the position directly to the left is, of course, a small blind, then the big blind. These are um, positions where you have to post the blinds uh, in these two respective games. And then these following three places. They're generally referred to as um, early position, okay? and that would be UTG1, UTG2, and UTG3. Under the gun, under the gun 2, under, gun, under the gun 3, so to say. Some people also uh, list this as under the gun, under the gun plus 1, under the gun plus 2. So if you yeah, read any of those different descriptions, that's what's meant. In Hold'em Manager, these three positions are considered early positions. So in early position, as you see here, this EP, um, more or less top left corner, he is raising 8% of his hands from early position. And that would entail then this position, this position, or this position. So under the gun, one, two, or three. right? And again, this, these three together are then labeled as early position in Holder Manager. These following three positions are considered middle position in a full ring game, 10 player. The position after that is then where the late, so-called late positions begin. You've got the dealer button here. The one right before that is called the cutoff. Especially in six max games, they're going to refer to both the button, the position before that as a cutoff, and the position before the cutoff as the so-called hijack. These are just different terms that you may hear. Um, you may also uh, read coaches explaining their play based on these certain positions. That's what's actually being uh, referred to. Again, early position, the first three after the blinds. Okay, you can call it what you want to. Following positions are then middle position, following three. Then you have the cutoff, the button itself, and again the small and the big. That would be a 10 player scenario. The way it happens is when, when players drop off, then basically you lose um, one late position as you go. Uh, we have right here, uh, we're playing NL200, 6 max, and uh, the situation is as follows. You've got the button, small blind, big blind, early position or under the gun, hijack, cutoff, and the button. Okay. This position is referred to as the early position, this position is then referred to as the middle position, and these two then respectively as the late position. Uh, to be very specific, again, cutoff and button to distinguish the two and then the blinds. Now, pre-flop, the big blind or the player in the big blind has the positional advantage. He's the very last person to act in pre-flop action. Uh, barring raises and uh, everything else that can happen here in this crazy wild game. But he does have the advantage of position in the meaning of uh, he's going to see what every other player does before he has to make a decision. It's the same in six max as it is in full ring and ten player games. The problem is, in every single street post-flop, both the small blind and the big blind are so-called out of position. 
Okay, if any of these guys call or play as, you know, we're probably going to here with the pair of aces, they're going to be acting out of position on all post flop streets. Okay, that's a huge disadvantage. And positional, uh, positional play is everything, especially in Omaha, but also most definitely in Hold'em as well. So uh, in position play means that when you are, for example, this king queen has position on the big blind. The hijack has position on the under the gun player. We have position on all of these guys post flop. The button has position on everybody else post flop. Uh, let's again just very briefly to the positions, and that's important for uh, the statistics that we're going to get into here in the next video. Uh, pot odds and equity. Um, these three websites I would advise looking at in more detail when you have time. A lot of people actually have problems with Wikipedia. They they think that it's a bit too yeah. Not, there's not enough control, etc. Um, but you know, as with all information, just take it for what it is and double check it. <laughs> Don't just believe anything uh, that's published, but you know, check it out, make sure that it makes sense. And yeah, if it does make sense, then you can use it as as you will. And yeah, it's, it's fantastic when you have such a community that's always um, posting new information and sharing knowledge with the entire world. Uh, in the poker community, of course, um, the people who post here, and, and I mean, there's a lot of scrutiny. Uh, there's also very often a lot of pride uh, for the people who <laughs> who write uh, poker articles, and especially the the math boys who uh, you know who post all the stats and all this kind of stuff and do this analysis. And, yeah, the so-called uh, poker math geeks. I'm unfortunately one of them. Yeah, we do tend to take that quite seriously. And when when we publish numbers, you know, we uh, normally normally we check them from various angles before they actually go online, right? Before they go live. Uh, that is the case with most, um, yeah, most good coaches, um, poker coaches, most good authors. You know, they uh, the numbers that they publish you can very often trust, and a lot of the numbers that are that are published uh, for the poker community do end up on Wikipedia. And yeah, this um, this little article here, you know, I haven't read it in great detail, but it's it's yeah, it's it's decent. I like especially here the first two um, areas that we have highlighted it's um, probability is a way of expressing knowledge or belief that an event will occur or has occurred uh, very simply put uh, in order to draw conclusions about the likelihood of potential events and the underlying mechanics of complex systems very good general overview and you can go via these links in very very great detail into what probability actually is and how that's worked out uh, pot odds in poker, and that's what we're going to get into now. This is the uh, meat and potatoes of this video. Um, Tis in poker, pot odds are the ratio of the current size of the pot to the cost of a contemplated call. Okay, it's a very clear way of putting that. Also, uh, potentially, yeah, too simple because, of course, um, you're also going to infer as to the actions of, of your opponents, and that means if you push over the top instead of just calling, right, instead of just making this contemplated call, in the end there's also going to be pot odds involved, especially in multi-way pots. But that is again based on assumption. This here, this contemplated call is based on uh, a lot of certainty if you're closing the betting. If you're contemplating this call in this pot and there's uh, one or more people to act behind you should be contemplating much more than just this call <laughs> you should be contemplating this call you know what the actions of the guy uh, behind you could be um, if you just call could this guy then come over the top if it's a no limit game you know he can even push over the then multiple other factors that come into basically any given scenario so again this in essence is the definition of pot odds it's very it's a very sim yeah simple way of putting it but for all intents and purposes, very correct. All right. Then they go into very good, very clear, very uh, very simple explanations of how that works out. Implied or simply yeah, implied pot odds or simply implied odds are calculated the same way as pot odds, but taken into consideration estimated future betting. Implied odds are calculated in situations where the player expects to fold in the following round if the draw is missed, thereby losing no additional bets, but expects to gain additional bets when the draw is made. Again, potentially yes. <laughs> you can also say, you know, your implied odds can also be based on the fold equity you expect to get when you push on the following round, also when you do miss. Um, so again, uh, take this for what it is. Um, it is 
yeah, it's a very clear, very, very simple way of putting things. Um, poker as such is, of course, much more complicated than uh, can be explained in any one article or any one video, which is why we're doing this whole series um, to give you guys the essential information that you need to beat up to, yeah, at least the idea is up to 70 or 80 percent of all the opponents you'll face at the low and mid limits at least. And of course, this is very fundamental knowledge pertaining to that goal. Reverse implied odds apply to situations where a player will win the minimum if he has the best hand, but lose the maximum if he does not have the best hand. So we had in the uh, bankroll management video a couple situations where we had over pairs pre-flop with that 80-20 equity advantage. The opponent then flopped the set and you saw that equity swing from 80% to basically 5% post-flop. Uh, sometimes a bit better but not much against the flop set. So um, that would be situations where the player with the smaller mid pair who's cold calling, right, in or out of position, is getting very good implied odds against a very tight razor. Okay, what that means is it's not necessarily going to be the case that he's going to hit on every flop. Actually, with a, with a small medium pair, he's only going to set up or set or better 7.5 to 1. So, you know, roughly around 10 to 11 percent of the time uh, somebody is going to hit that set with any given pop. Reverse implied odds, of course, um, are on the side of the, the person with the high pocket pair that then flops, you know, for example, as we saw um, in that in the video on bankroll management, over pair kings with the nut straight draw on a non-suited board. Having no clue and actually knowing mathematically that it's highly unlikely that anybody else has a king at all, given that you have the kings yourself. But, you know, your opponent actually did flop the ace-king uh, straight, and you are, at, you know, best case scenario, drawing to a run and run in full house, or um, splitting the pot with the unlikely ace to come. Okay, so the reverse implied odds would be then on your side of the fence, unfortunately, in that scenario. All right, just to give you a brief overview of what these terms are. Another article that I want you guys to check out is um, this one here, Card Chat, uh, Expected Value, and how that applies to, yeah, probability. Okay, and I'll just scroll down so that you guys can pause the video. Now we want to get into the spreadsheets themselves.